Hey everybody. So today we're going to do a whole video about wallet pockets and the different types of wallet pockets you can make. Um, we have patterns. There's a bunch of different patterns. Um, some are on our website. There's one that we're going to use that's free on Weaver's website. So if you want to try any of this stuff, um, links will be in the description. Uh, let's get into it. The first style of pocket we're going to talk about is the very popular tea pocket. And it's called the tea pocket because it's shaped like a tea. So the way that these work is we have our base layer, and this could be a full wallet, it could be one with a hidden pocket. We put one pocket down, we stitch across the bottom, then we put our second pocket down, and that T part kind of locks in so that we're only ha getting one layer of leather along our seams. So let's put this together and go through it. So when we're making pockets, an optional step that you might choose to take is to skive down some of the parts of the pocket that aren't going to be seen. They're going to be below the seam of the pocket above them. And we do this to remove bulk and just make the wallet sit a little bit more flat. Now you don't have to do this if you use thin enough leather, two, three ounces. I'm using a three ounce leather here, but I'm still going to do a little bit of skiving so I can show you where on a tea pocket that you want to skive. The most common places on a tea pocket to skive are going to be along the base right here. And down the sides. And you have to be careful with this. I know I made a line, but Usually I just kind of freehand it. And if you take off a little bit of the edge, you ideally don't want to do that, but it's okay because you're going to have another pocket over it. Now, another way that you can skive this is we can take our tea pocket, and this is if you're using like a little bit of a thicker leather. I'm going to take some dividers here, and I'm going to set my dividers for the width of my tea. And they don't like going that big, but we can convince them. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a, a little bit of a line following, if your pocket's curved, following the curve. If it's flat, it would obviously just be flat. Then I take my French edger, and this is basically, you have your skiving knife. This is more of a, a pushing, removing um, weight from the inside of a piece of leather. And what you can do is, you can actually skive this entire thing. Now, I don't know if this is sharp enough for this thin leather, but we're gonna try it. Um, yeah, so see, we're, we're getting there. And you wanna just go slow with these and make sure they're sharper than this one is. And we're gonna use that line that we made and we're just gonna push away from it. And when we do this, what we're doing is we're removing all of the bulk from below um, the exposed part of this piece of leather. You see? And so when we have our tea pocket and we put our second tea pocket above it, it's full thickness right up to here. And then, because we used our dividers, it drops down in thickness under it to keep the bulk down. So there are a lot of different ways to assemble a pocket bank with tea pockets. I'm gonna just show you the way that I do it. Um, the first thing I do is I glue the tabs on my pockets. And then I've also, in at least in our patterns, we always include a tuck pocket guide. And that's a little piece that you put on your bank, the, I don't know what you would call that, the back pocket, support pocket thing. Um, and it allows you to mark where the top of your top pocket goes so that you get everything laid out evenly. I've gone ahead and done that on our main body piece here. So you see I have my marks here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and I'm going to glue from there down. Not all the way because then we're going to glue around for our bottom pocket after. And you might notice that I'm not gluing the bottoms of the pockets. And I just personally, I don't glue them. I just glue the tabs and then I stitch the bottom. But you can glue them if you want. You can make your markings and glue it all in that way too if you want. Once our glue is tacky, we're ready to glue these in. So what we're gonna do first is take our top pocket. We're gonna line that up. And at least in our pockets, you're gonna have some overhang here. That's to account for any different thickness leathers you might be using. We stick that down there, stick that down there. I like to give it a little tap with my hammer. Yeah. 
and then we have our dividers here, and I'm just gonna do a little line along the bottom, and that's gonna be my stitch line. So now we're gonna punch that. So you can sew all the way across. Because this is just a demonstration, I'm just gonna do a few stitches. And to be honest with you, you can do this and it'll hold just fine for years and years as well. Once that's done, we can install our second pocket, and we're just gonna butt that up to that T, push it in, stick it down, and we want we don't want any gaps here. You can have gaps after, that's our trim allowance, but we don't want any gaps down there. And for these, if you want, you can use bone folder, really get in there and stick it down nice. There we go, no gaps. So I'm not gonna bore you with the rest of it, but you know, we'd do the same thing. We'd stitch across the bottom and then we would glue in our top pocket. And that is how you get yourself a T pocket pocket bank. The next one we're gonna do is an overlapping pocket. Now these look like T pockets because partially they're cut out like T pockets. But if you look at the size of our back piece, you'll notice that the T's are all trim allowance. So what we're gonna end up with is a pocket that overlaps the pocket above it. And the way we do this is a little bit more skiving. And it's really hard to do these style pockets without skiving at all. That's kind of how they're designed to be done. So I have my dividers set for the width that I want the pocket to show above the other pocket, right? And what I'm gonna do is similar to the last pocket, I'm gonna start by tracing a line along the top. That's gonna be the visible part of the pocket. Below it, we need to remove some material. So I'm gonna go down on both sides, and then I'm gonna go down across the bottom, and that'll remove some bulk. Now remember, just like our T pockets, if you wanna take your French edger and simply skive all of this down, you can. We've already showed you how to do that. I'm gonna show you how to do the selective skiving on an overlapping pocket. So I like to use a combination of a French edger and my skiving knife when I'm removing bulk on an overlapping pocket. I use the French edger pretty much just for our little overlapping spot. And this is all personal preference. If, if you can do this all with a skiving knife and you're comfortable with it, by all means go for it. So we'll rem remove that first and then we'll remove this. I just sharpened these and it's not working, but Good enough. Then I take my skiving knife and I do more of a standard skive like I would on a tea pocket. There we go. And now it's not the prettiest thing because I am not the best with a French edger and that French edger should have been a little more sharp, but there we go. So now what's gonna happen is when we turn this over, we're going to have a very obvious line here and then our overlapping pocket is gonna sit right in that little space that we skive down. So this is going to kind of disappear. It's gonna be there, but you're not gonna see it underneath the pocket on top of it. So this looks very similar to our tea pockets, but it is a bit different. So we have to remember, grab a pen, that all of this is trim allowance. So we wanna make sure when we glue that we're gluing inside of this um, trim allowance here because it's all gonna be cut off pretty much. So when we go to glue, I do glue the trim allowance for sure because you, sometimes you use a little bit of it, but you wanna focus on the part inside of the trim allowance because that's gonna be the part that's actually sticking to your pocket bank body situation. I'm gonna do that on both. And then we're gonna go over and do the same thing we did on our last one with our pocket bank piece, and we're just gonna glue down the side of it. And again, this is the, this specific pattern is free on Weaver's website. It'll be in the first link in the description. Um, we're doing one less pocket than 
the pattern comes with, but it has a top pocket guide that you can print out, cut out, and it'll show you exactly where to put your top pocket. So installing our first pocket on this overlap is very similar to doing the T pocket. The only difference is we want to make sure that we get, remember this is all trim allowance. We want to make sure that we line up this corner here as best we can with the edge because we're not really looking to have this trim allowance as part of our piece. It's just a little extra just in case. So I'm going to be real careful about that and center it and then stick it down. And again, I'm going to use my bone folder on this one because we really want to kind of massage that skived part in and press down because we want our second pocket to fit into that little notch there. And unlike the T pocket, you're going to see that this actually will end up being stuck way down under the second pocket. And that's one of the benefits to this style pocket um, because a lot of the times if you if you sew pockets like uh, like the T-style pockets, you'll know that when you're laying your stitch line, you want to make sure, let me get my stitching chisel here, you, you usually want to make sure that you're not getting a stitch right in the middle there, right? Because it, once you stitch it, it'll kind of pull the pockets apart, it won't look that great. When you do an overlap pocket like this, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you, you want to try, you want your stitching to look neat, but if you end up with a stitch right there, it's not really going to do much because you have all of this material underneath it and everything's going to lay nice and flat. So in that respect, that's one of the benefits of doing this style pocket, even though it is a little more work. And now once we're done, and of course I'm doing this kind of sloppy just to show you, um, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a stitch across the bottom. So we'll take our calipers here we'll lay a little stitch line. And again, I'm only going to do one punch because this is just um, sort of an exhibition thing for the video. So one of the main differences comes to when it's time to put the next pocket on our pocket bank of this overlap style pocket. You can see I've used my calipers to mark, and these are the other calipers that I have that are set to this line right here that is going to be the exposed part of these pockets. I've used that to mark on the corners here where I want the top of our next pocket to land. And I've done that because as you can see, we have our glue line here, but we've laid new leather on top. So we need to kind of rough this up a little bit and add a little extra glue because our new pocket is gonna sit on top of this and be stuck to it. Now once our glue's dry and we go to set our second pocket on top of our first pocket, you can see that we're going to get our overlap here, but because we skived everything down, it's still going to lay fairly flat. And you can go even more serious with the skiving too. And there we go. And now I'm not going to put this whole pocket together, but you would see that our third pocket would lay over top there, and we would still get a nice flat seam here. But I want to show you that when we trim off our seam allowance, you'll see that they're not actually T pockets at all. Whereas right here, you can see that we have this T notch here. These are all laying flat and then coming in to remove some bulk. And when we go to put our stitch line in, we can butt that right up against the top of the second pocket. And we don't have to worry about splitting a seam like this because there is no seam, it overlaps. So those are the two big differences with the T pocket and the overlapping pocket. Now I do have one last type of pocket to show you and we call them the lazy pocket. The lazy pocket doesn't really use any pockets at all. It uses one piece of leather sandwiched to another piece of leather and I've laid out slits every half inch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna punch some holes we're going to cut these slits, and the idea is that your pocket will slide into the slits. Now let's get that done and we'll show you why that's not such a great idea. So 
So at first glance, the Lazy Pocket looks cool, it's slim, it takes very little time to actually make. But the problem that you run into is, if you do it like this, A, this is the piece of leather, right? So it's just not great. And then when you slide cards in, the idea is that you put one there, and you put one here, etc., etc. Now, there is one exception to this rule. If you're going to sew in nylon pockets to every um, sl slot, go for it. That's a normal way to make wallets. But a lot of times you'll see pieces made that are just like this, and that's the card bank. And if you do it this way, the minute that you push this down, it, the card's gone. Like, you either have to super stretch this out to reach down, and imagine this is all stitched up, to reach it, or it's just kind of stuck there. Um, and so that's why we call these lazy pockets, because functionally speaking, they just don't work really well or at all. Um, I don't mean to step on any toes. Every once in a while you'll see a design with like a single one, and that might be okay. Um, but when you have a bank like this, I would highly suggest that you don't go this route and take the time to make a proper stacked card slot bank because this is gonna function way better. You're gonna learn a lot more by learning how to skive and keeping the thickness down. Um, this is just not gonna result in a piece that functions well over time. And so here we go. We have three of the most popular styles of um, pockets to make in leather wallets and carry goods. I hope that our explanations kind of walked you through how to do some of them. We have our overlap, our tea pocket, and then of course the infamous lazy pocket. Um, if you want to try these two, we don't have a pattern for this, but if you want to try either of these, uh, this wallet, this pattern will be free on Weaver's website, first link in the description. Um, and I'll link our nine pocket and 11 pocket uh, with the tea pocket design. This is mostly what we do. Um, and everything is sized for the five millimeter. You can do four or three, two, but we, we like to use the five millimeter stitching chisel, chisels that Weaver carries. So if you're using a five millimeter stitching chisel, you won't have to worry about running into this, um, this putting a stitch line right in the middle of a joint. It's all sized to overlap. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next one.